Hey guys, and welcome back to another new video. So today's video is going to be about the best ally protection monsters or champions for clan boss. So as we all know, it's very difficult to last long in clan boss if your team does not have ally protection. Um, so ally protection actually absorbs 50% of the damage from the unit that cast it. So in other words, if uh, rear guard sergeant puts it on, she's going to take 50% of the damage that was dealt on your allies, which is a lot of damage, but that is why you need to use tanky units. Now, a lot of people see ally protection differently. So the way I saw it was if your team has a lot of ally protection on it, no one's going to take any damage at all, right? Because it still mitigates the damage by 50%. Which is why I built a clan boss team of two ally protection units. Namely, Mis Miscreated Monster and Rear Guard Sergeant. So, this team um, on Brutal clan boss reached 12 million. Well, to be more accurate, 11.82 on one key. Um, and that is... Considering that I only have two six stars, which means only two units that can proc War Master, and Bulwark does not have any masteries at all, and well, their gear is not the best. <laughs> so, if that team could make 12 million on Brutal and it's a bunch of five stars, then it has to work, right? So, let's just get into it, and I will show you which champions are the best ones to use for this combination of ally protection units. So, let's start off with Miscreated Monster. Of course, this guy is an absolute beast. So, um, his third skill uh, heals himself by 50% HP and places continuous heal buff on himself. And then places an ally protection buff on all allies on a four turn cooldown. Now this is an amazing skill because that actually means you don't have to put him on lifesteal gear because he self sustains. But it would be good to put him on immortal sets. Um, I have mine on shield uh, because I use him literally everywhere. And uh, the shield buff is very handy for dungeons at the rate that I'm playing at. And of course the lightning... Storm helps with putting up shields, but this is about ally protection. So he's gonna take a little bit of damage every time because Rear Guard Sergeant also puts up the ally protection. So that brings me to the second unit Rear Guard Sergeant. So Rear Guard Sergeant has the decreased attack, decreased defense, and the ally protection with a continuous heal buff on all allies. Now, she does not put the heal buff on herself, which is a little bit concerning because that means she does not heal unless you have her on uh, lifesteal gear. Um, to be fair, her second skill does have a heal this champion by 25% of the inflicted damage, which would be amazing with War Master, of course. So that is why I would highly suggest playing her with um, lifesteal gear. Now, as you can see, the gear I have on her, it's not insane. Uh, it's not maxed out, of course. But, I mean, it's just 5-star. The accuracy is not high at all. And it does its job. I mean, the only reason I'm not doing Nightmare is because we already cleared it. Um, so, yeah. I recently replaced Apothecary with Rear Guard Sergeant, by the way. So, now let's get to the third monster. Now, <laughs> I think this is a kind of an obvious one, and that is Skullcrusher. So, Skullcrusher makes everything so much easier with um, Stonewall. So, it has the ally protection and the un unkillable, which makes everything much easier. And, of course, the counter attack. Now, if you pair him up with a... With two damage dealers, two ally protection, well, another ally protection and a defense buffer that has, and all together in that um, 
team. It has to have attack break, obviously, defense buff, and, um, you know, dots and stuff like that. He makes it very difficult for your team to die because of the um, unkillable buff as well. Because the ally protection units are usually the ones that die first because they take extra damage. So, yeah, it it makes it easier. Um, now, the fourth one is going to be Jarag. So, Jarag is like a full package. Uh, he literally has ally protection, defense buff, and attack break all in one. And then he also has the um, little heal that he puts up, which is actually really nice. Um, it's not bad at all. If I had him, I'd probably use him instead of rearguard sergeant. Just because he brings more utility, um, his attack break is more reliable, and also he has a passive that's basically more of useful than um, most passives. And well, I guess it's a permanent defense buff, right? Uh, so the only problem with him is his chance of landing is pretty low because it's at max it's 60%, right? But he only attacks once, so it only has one time 60% chance of placing it. Um, if you mass use the right masteries, it goes up to 65. But still, um, like, for example, Tyrell. Uh, Tyrell uses... Where is he? There he is. His skill attacks twice, so he has kind of like a 50% chance to get it um, the first time and a 50% chance to get it the second time. So, it's a bigger chance in total. Now, um, the next one is going to be... This was actually a surprising one to me. Um, it's Captain Tamila. So, she is very similar to Jarag, actually. She just does not have the attack break. She's got the ally protection. Um, bummer, it's plain ally protection, nothing else. And it's on a four-turn cooldown. Yeah. And then the second skill is... A defense buff on all allies and then heal all allies by 15% of this champion's max HP which is actually really good and then the first skill is a continuous heal with a 50% chance if she crits so she's actually not that bad for a clan boss honestly she's full support of course um, so yeah she does have self-sustain and everything so I would if you do not have any other options for um, ally protection, I would highly recommend her. And now, the last one on the list is gonna be uh, Sand Lashed Sand Lash Survivor. So, she is low... Uh, she's like... Mm, she's below on my list because I don't like the fact that her ally protection is a passive. So, it might sound good, um, and I know that Hal Hades actually made a review video on her where he showed how amazing she is, because she is actually pretty amazing. Um, if you have her max booked, max masteries, if you have amazing gear on her, if you do not have amazing gear for this unit, I would not recommend building her, because she has a lot of requirements. She needs accuracy, she, well, not for clan bosses. She needs um, speed, a lot of defense. Um, she actually needs crit rate and crit damage. And she needs HP, of course. So her first skill is completely useless for clan boss, which is just a provoke. Um, her second skill is the interesting part where it increases the duration of all your buffs. Now, the AI has a thing where it does not use this skill if... Um, your team does not have a certain amount of buffs on it. So, in other words, if I were to use her on my team and I only had one unit that places defense buff on my team, um, she would not use it. So, and I mean, <laughs> the passive only activates once a unit, well, once one of your allies um, lose 50% of their HP which means it's going to be pretty late in the um, clan boss run. And by then, I feel like if the boss is going to do enough damage to take 50% away from one of your units, the next hit's probably going to kill everyone. 
So, yeah. Um, also, she has an aura that's pretty good. I really like the aura. Uh, anyway, those are the units that have... Th uh, the epic units, anyway. The best epic units um, that have ally protection. I know that there are other um, epic units with ally protection in their kits. Um, for example, this guy. But he is absolutely terrible. Do not use him, even if... You do not have an ally protection and you consider using Azure. Please, please do not build this guy. He is terrible. He is absolutely garbage for a clan boss. Like, I know he's got an ally protection with a shield, but no. <laughs> Just don't do it. It's not gonna be worth it. You're gonna waste books. You're gonna waste. Um, experience and every you're just gonna waste your time that's literally all you're gonna be doing uh and i know that there's another champion that does it um i'm just not quite sure where it is or who it was um who was it i honestly cannot remember give me a second oh wait i know i know who all right so it's <sighs> Nazana. Alright, so her second skill is the ally protection with the shield buff on herself. It's literally the exact same thing as Azure's. It's, it's the exact same thing. But she is more useful because she does have the attack break. That is on a three turn cooldown. But it's... And it, it's got a 75% chance. So, it's got a high chance. But it's on a three turn cooldown. So... Honestly, it's not that bad, but the thing that breaks her for the clan boss that make makes or breaks her is the fact that her first skill is completely useless. It's not going to do anything. Like, there's no point. Um, yeah, and her aura is not anything either. So you could use her. You could because she has the third skill with the attack break, but that's only if you're desperate for an attack break as well. So, yeah. Um, dang, this video is really fucking long. Okay. Um, units that you would should team these guys up with are going to be like Grizzled Jarl. Um, one of my specific favorites uh, is actually um, Sentinel. Fucking amazing unit. I love her. I absolutely love this unit. Um, yeah, they're basically... my. Them Dragons 20 team is basically um, Sergeant, Sentinel, uh, Monster, Draco, and um, Kale. And it's on a 100% success rate. It does take 3 minutes though, so it's not that fastest, but it's okay, I have to say. So anyways, thanks guys for watching, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.